as usual, uh, remember to mute your audio and if you, and then use the chat box, ask questions as we go through. Today, we are going to be talking about uh, Adobe Forms and how to make your Adobe documents fillable. So um, I already clicked record. I'm, I'm like ahead of the game already. So like living my best life. Um, remember our professional development norms as we go through today, be committed, be responsible, respectful, and safe, take care of your needs, ask questions, um, make sure you get all the things taken care of that you need to. So um, you can mute your camera, blur your background, whatever you need to feel comfortable. Like I said, if you have a question, you can jump in or you can stay on and, and smile at me, that's okay too. Um, this fits into our MTSS framework and the um, helping kind of do all sorts of things. We, we talk about this a lot in gathering data, um, get data from our students, but then also in the instructional side, we'll do an example for both of those today. So you're gonna learn about Adobe Forms, how to make your uh, PDFs Adobe and all of that stuff. So I'm gonna live mostly in Adobe today um, so that you can kind of see. So all of you have access to what is called Adap um, Acrobat Pro. So if you don't have access to this on your computer, when you go into, uh, let me open it up on my computer, but when you go in and like you look for Adobe or whatnot, you should see Adobe Acrobat Pro DC usually is what it's called. Um, or up in the top, you'll see it's called Creative Cloud and you have this like box that kind of looks like this when you open it up sometimes as well. Um, if you don't have this, your field tech can get this installed for you. As an educator, you have access to all of the paid versions of all of this. And some of the tools we're using today are paid versions, and so you'll need that. Um, if it asks you to sign in, you sign in. I'll show you the sign-in process real fast. It's going to yell at me and call me names. Um, but the sign-in process is pretty simple. You're going to use your CSD docs to sign in. Um, so you click here, continue with Google. And then it's going to ask you if you are signing in. Um, there's my CSD docs. I click on that. And then it asks if this is personal or a company or school account. We're going to say it's a school account. And then that will be all I need to do. And I'm signed into the Creative Cloud. And then I can choose to download the Adobe um, Acrobat DC. So you'll see that as an option in the apps there. So if you do need help with that, remember, check with your field tech, put in a ticket, footprints, and they can get you um, installed with Acrobat DC. Okay, so then uh, once you're all in there, we are going to kind of talk through some of these pieces. Um, let me pull this up and get that. Okay, so I'm just gonna hide this one now and my stuff should be here, perfect. Okay, so we're gonna just open up my Adobe. Um, so this can work with any document. Are you able to see my Acrobat Adobe, Chelsea? You can just kind of give me a thumbs up or a whatnot, you can see this page here. Okay, perfect, thank you. Just wanna make sure y'all can see the right one. So uh, when you come in here, you can do multiple different things um, and you can open up your own documents. I'm going to open up a document in here um, they're all slowly scanning in, but I'm gonna open up a document that you might use typically. So this is a, um, a like a teacher information piece. So sometimes we're gathering information from our students and we want to know, you know, oh, hey, what's, what's your birthday? I, I did these a lot at the beginning of the school year, right? Where we ask them, hey, what's your birthday? Do you ride home on the bus? All of that stuff. And um, so this is something that you can fill out and have your teachers fill out, um, your parents fill out virtually, and I'll show you how to do that. So the first thing we're gonna do is find our document. You can either create it brand new or you can bring it in, open it already. So I'm gonna just go file and I'm going to open um, a document. And let's see, it is in my computer, in my downloads. Let me get to get a site into my life here of all the things that live in my downloads folder. Um, oh, we're going to do that one here in just a second. So I'll open that up. So we'll start here with this fillable one. So say, for example, you have your students, you're going to assign them in a document um, that you want them to fill out. This is from the elementary science curriculum. These are the claim evidence and reasoning um, scoring rubric. And you can see right now as a student, if I were to open this up, I can type in it because I'm using Adobe, but if students were typing in this, they would not be able to. Um, so we want to be able to make them have 
those check boxes up here so they can check in it and all of those things. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. And Adobe is pretty cool because it does a lot of this for you. So um, it's pretty smart in the sense that it just kind of knows what you're looking for and will put them in. There's a lot of different types of, of fillable fields that you can have. So in some of these, you'll see here, we have the checkbox that we can add. You can add just regular text here. I've also added regular text boxes over here in this one right here. So you can add those ones. There's a lot of different other ones. We're gonna kind of focus mo mostly on, on those ones uh, today. So this is the one I've already filled out. Let me grab the one that I haven't because that's probably easiest if you fill out one that is not filled out. This is the fun thing that happens when you update your Adobe during your PD, which is what I just did by clicking that button. So that was fun and exciting. Um, so here's the document. I'm going to open this up now. Okay. So here's my non-fillable one. Don't save that and open my other one. Just thinking about it. Okay. So this um, is one of those that, like I said, you can have your parents fill out, all of those types of things. This one we're doing is for students. So students can fill it out. So when you open the document on the right hand or left hand side, you'll see I have these two arrow lines. Yours might be hidden somewhere. So sometimes it's on the left over here and sometimes it's on the right. And you can see when I do that, it opens up all of these tools. When I get to this tool, I'm going to be looking for um, the, the um, form tool. And you can see it's right here. It's called prepare form. So I'm going to click this button and it's going to say, are you sure this is the document you want to fill? I'm going to say, of course it is. How dare you? And it's going to bring me into this and give me these editing options. So now I have all of these options up here that I can then insert in here. Okay. So if I wanted text box right here where self score is, I just grab a text box now, drag it down to self score and fill it in that box. I can even name the box. Um, this is good for if they have accessibility readers or things like that. I could be like, this is your claim score. Um, and that way it just kind of names what that document is or what that box is. So now you can see I've got that there. So I just have to do this for all of my, uh, the spots I want students to fill in. Now, I don't want them to fill in the teacher score because I'm going to do that with them or for them or something. So I'm just filling out this, the student side. So I'm making these ones. Now, in this down here, I want to add a checkbox. I want them to fill this out, and then I want them to check that they checked it with a neighbor. So I'm going to have them do a peer review. So the neighbor is going to have to fill out a checkbox somewhere. So what I can do up here at the top, you can see I have a checkbox button. I just click that. And then I can put a checkbox wherever I want and say, I can see check when um, completes. And so now I've entered in a checkbox and you can see for us, it doesn't look right, but for the students, I can preview what this is going to look like. And you can see now when I go here, I can type in here. I can type in there. I can't type in this one because I didn't do anything there yet. Right. And I also have a checkbox. So that's the basic, basic of just adding things in there. We've added that. But if you noticed, when I typed in the boxes up here, it went really long and I won't let me see the whole thing, right? So there's a bunch of edit settings in each one of these that allow you to actually change what it does. So to do that, we're going to go to properties and this is going to give us tons of information. And it can be a little bit of an overload because there's tons of things we can do with this. Don't be too overwhelmed by it. There's not a lot you have to click on here and there's nothing really you can break as you go through here, but there's a lot of options. What we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go into these, the options here and allow for multi-line. That way it'll bring the text back down. That's always a good spot for you if you're having lots and lots of text written in there. Have that multi-line will let it kind of fill in this, the width there. You can do a lot of other things here. Um, one thing I've seen people do is um, they actually validate and say, um, this field has to have this number in it. So almost to correct it type of a thing. So when it is this and this, they can, you know, they get a check mark or whatever. That's an advanced thing. You don't have to do that. Don't worry about that. 
Um, there's also some different options here. You can you know, center it, you can right align the text, and left align the text. Another great thing I've seen teachers do is they pre-fill the box for the students. So they say, um, click here and type. So when you have students who, you know, it can be in green flashing letters, click this button, click this button, and they still don't quite see it. This allows them to have a pre-filled text. And I'll show you what that looks like when I um, delete it first. And then I'm going to go in, view my properties now that it's clear. It will put it in there. Let's do a new one. So you can see it easier that I haven't written all in. So I just draw my box just like usual. Um, get my properties and I can fill in and say, um, click here. Multi-line, I'm choosing my multi-line. You can also change the color and the size of the font if you want to for some reason. If you're like, oh, we want this a big font because they're just typing in one number or we can make it smaller. So those are some of those options that it gives you when you're having them fill out. So now when I go in here, you can see it already says click here for the students, it's already filled out. And so they can click there, delete that stuff and type in there. So you can even say, you know, go to the box that says this and write the rest of that sentence. You could even put a sentence uh, frame there already for a student that then they can fill out. Okay, so that was, it's kind of the text piece. The text one's pretty easy. We did the checkbox. The checkbox similarly gives you some options not a lot of options, because what are there with uh, a text box? But basically, you can make it a circle, a diamond, a square, a star. Um, so all of those different types of things are available. So I've made mine a star. You can do different types of things. Like, go ahead and star your the one you think is the best. And then they can go through here and choose the one that they think is the best. It also allows me to copy and paste these. So if I um, like this one and I'm like, I want to duplicate this, I can duplicate this in my edit settings. So I can just keep the same one that I've been using and do it again. So now I'm like, okay, now this one here, and I'll put one that one there. That way I don't have to edit my settings every single time. It's just boom, and I'm there to go. So now when I go into preview, these ones I've connected because you gotta make sure you don't connect them. See how they're all connected there? Blame, that was me. My bad, y'all, my bad, let's disconnect them. Um, but they, you can have things do it all across. So you, you know, set one thing up and they do all of them or they're completely different. So you have a lot of different options when it gets into the little pieces you can do. Some other things that you can add in here, as you can see up at the top, is um, these radio buttons. These radio buttons just let them choose an option. So this is almost like, a, you know, which one of these A, B, and C. I don't see a lot of people using these. I wouldn't recommend it, um, but it is an option if you're interested in. It allows the student to basically just select that. Same thing as the star in the checkbox type of a thing. It allows them to select out of maybe there's four options. They can choose one of those. Okay, so let's go down here to our claims. Now, we know that our students are going to be writing a lot of information. So instead of putting in our simple uh, text field here, we're going to go over and actually put in um, a bigger field and kind of talk about how the, all those go. And we can put in some choices as well. So I'm going to put in my choices right here. This is a list box, and we'll talk about that in just a second. And put in that. So I've got my text field in there. I've got my list box. And I'll show you what that looks like here in just a second when, when we go out of it. But um, basically, it's going to give me um, a bunch of options, of choices, basically, that I can choose from that you can use with these radio buttons. There's also this print a clear button. You can add different types of buttons onto the screen. For most of our students, we're not using these buttons. Um, we're not using a you know, print button, click here to print, those types of things. But the button option is in here for some reason you wanted to. And then you would create an action that when they click on it, they it does something. So it opens a file, it makes a sound, it prints it, those types of things. So it submits the form when they actually click on that. So now that I've added that, if they click on this button, it will go ahead and submit the form for them. So there's a lot of different options you can choose with that button one here. This one adds an image or a field. 
So you can add like an extra picture. Most of us do this when we're creating our documents anyway, so it's not necessary here, but it's an option. This one adds a calendar date field. So if you want the students to choose the date, so let's say you're having a doc, you're doing each one of these on a different day. So you're gonna have claim you're gonna work on on one day, evidence you're gonna work on another day, and reasoning on another day. You can go ahead and set that up so that when students go in, they can click and choose what day they worked on this. I worked on this on the 16th. What day did I work on this? Oh, this one I did on the 20th. Or estimated dates of, that they're going to go ahead and do. Then there's the signature line. This is the digital signature. This is helpful when you're doing parent documents and parents' information. It will give an option for them to actually sign the document there, which is super nice. So now when I go in, it gives me an option to click in here and actually sign this document that I am the one who did this and saw this and signed it and all those things. It would put my name on there and all of that. So that's kind of an, a look at all of the buttons at the top. And we're going to talk a little bit about how it all works down here on the right hand side. So you'll notice I've got all the things I, I put in this document from these up here. Everything's over here. So it kind of gives you a way of looking at all of the things that you did to this document at once. So you're like, oh, where was that, the, you know, my check mark? Well, oh, it's right here. I can see that my check marks are here and I can go in and delete them over here if for some reason I can't find them up here. Uh, so it's just basically almost an index or a table of contents uh, over here on the right hand side of all the things you've inserted into the document. When you're done with it and you're like, hey, this is great and beautiful. I love it. I've got my checkbox. I've got my, my typable text. I've got my signature field and my button. Everything's good. The best part about this, all you have to do is click close. And now it's ready for students. So now I can file and save this. Um, I obviously typed in it all these times. So now I can just send this PDF in Canvas, email it out to my parents, my students, and when they open it up in their browser, when they either download it, they don't have to have the paid version, it will be able to fill in any of these boxes for them. So then they're good to go, they can type in whatever it is. So let's say you're doing a student information sheet and you're saying, you know, oh, hey, what, you know, fill out, I want to know what your name is and, and where you're from and all of these types of things. They can actually fill that out ahead of time. So thinking about this, looking at students doing this um, at the beginning of the year and sending this home with parents, right? And being like, oh, okay, will you fill this out for me and bring it back uh, the next day? Now you can email it to them and they can fill it out instead of they have to print it and then send it back to you. This allows them just to fill it out and send it back to you, any document, and send it back to you, sign it, put information in. So it really helps you in communicating with your parents to be able to have a little bit closer connection because a lot of parents, they maybe they don't have a printer. Like um, That's one thing when we went home in March during the pandemic, I realized uh, my kids' teachers were like, Phil, print this out and do this worksheet. And I was like, we don't have a printer at home. Like That was a weird moment for me. I was like, we need to buy a printer. Um, so those are things that some of our families might have as well, where they don't have those options. And so this gives them um, that tool. So for example, if you are doing a some sort of student information document, right? So like this one here, where you want parents to be able to fill this out, that you could do the same thing. Go in here and, and say, prepare my form, and then it will do it for you. Now, let's talk about the doing it for you part, because this is probably my favorite thing. I could go in and create every one of those as a as like a line, but it's a lot of work. There's a lot of fields here. I've already made this. Um, I'm good to go. I want it to do it for me. So when you click prepare form, there's a little button under here that says form field auto detection is, and I'm going to change it to on. So it opens up this piece and I'm going to say automatically detect form fields. So what that's going to do is when I click start, it is going to find all of them and do it for me. I didn't have to do anything. So it already labeled it and said last name because over here it said last name. So now I've made sure everything is good. I can go through and be like, oh, this one, it did it wrong because it said it gets home. It somehow didn't see how child gets home, right? So I can go in and edit that name and say, you know, how child gets home, boom, I'm good. And I could go through and update any of those. If I wanted to add uh, a check mark 
you know, check mark which number I should call first. Which should I call mom first? Should I call dad first? Who should I call first? You know, check mark that. So I can do all of that. And now when I go in, you'll see everything is, is text writable. They can fill it all in for me, save it. They can do the check mark and then I'm good to go. Even it even did down here, it did all of these. So that's what the auto does for me. You can see I got P teachers, pay teachers right there. So that's what the auto does for you. So it automatically fills out these forms and um, all the boxes for you. So if I were to do the, the sentence frames one, the sentence stems, we see our, um, let's do that one auto and I'll show you what it is. So right now we're not in auto. Notice there's no way I can type in this. I'm going to click prepare form. Auto detection is on. I click start and you can see it did it for me. Now it does it what with whatever it thinks is right. So it made a box here that says, oh, I think you want to write something here. I don't. I can just delete that. It want, You want to write something here? No, I don't. But it thinks you did because I left a line there. So it thinks I want to write something on top of these pictures. I don't. So I can just delete what I don't want and leave the ones that I do want. And it's an easier way than you having to go through and build each one if you don't want to. So now they're already done for me. I just have to now save this and send it to my students. I can send it to them on Canvas. Uh, I can, you know, put on my in an email and send it to parents or whatnot. So that's kind of the process for filling out the form. There's the manual way and there is the um, the automatic way. Both of them have their pluses and minuses, as we saw with the student information card. It does did almost everything perfectly for us. We're good. But with the sentence uh, stem one, it's kind of sketchy, made us do a little bit more work. So you decide kind of what you think is best for you. Do you guys have any questions, um, Any anything as we go on, any Adobe questions either? Like um, you can also edit. So like, let's say I didn't like the, the title of this, like it was misspelled. I could go in and just edit the text um, automatically in here without having to redo my PDF or whatnot. Um, all of those options and tools are in here. And there's some pretty cool tools as you go through. So um, that you can kind of play with. But if you don't have questions, you're welcome. We're about, well, we got five minutes left, which is perfect. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Um, if you do have questions or need support, this video and uh, the presentation will be on the Canyon Zoo page. And that's the last thing I just wanted to share with you. Let me find it wherever it went, because, oh, right there. So um, there is, all of these things are on the Canyon Zoo page. Um, you can go there. You can also get relicensure your credit for attending today by clicking on this box. It'll give you, it'll have you put in your things. And then if you have any suggestions for things you would like, I'm gonna copy and paste that into the chat so you can get it. Um, but yeah, if you have nothing else, you're, go and enjoy the rest of your day for crying out loud. Why not? Hey, Justin? Yeah. So um, you said to, if we don't have Adobe, we should contact our field tech, right? Not our yeah. ed tech. Yeah, okay. your field tech will be the person because they have to install the program first and then you can sign in. And if you feel like, if you're feeling really confident and you're like, ooh, I'm ready to totally do something, you know, bomb today, you can do it yourself. Oh, okay. um, if you want to. So if you just Google search the Adobe cloud, I think it's uh -huh. creative cloud and just download the creative cloud suite. Do I have rights to do that? Cause a lot of times you get an error message that you says should have the rights if you've been set up as an administrator on your computer. So it just depends. So okay. some field techs do things differently, but you can try by just downloading the creative cloud and then signing in how I showed you at the beginning with your CSD docs. Yep, and yep. you're good to go. Okay. okay. But it's not uh, a message to your field tech will be perfect. Okay. Okay. Perfect. okay. Thanks, Catherine. Thanks, Chelsea. Have a great one. Enjoy yourselves.